Here are specific instructions on how to correctly install the True Trainer Dual Return Idler. After identifying the problem area, prepare to install True Trainer Dual Return as follows. For belt speeds less than 100 feet per minute, install 10 feet before the problem area. For belt speeds greater than 100 feet per minute, but less than 800 feet per minute, install 20 feet before the problem area. For belt speeds greater than 800 feet per minute, install 30 feet before the problem area. For belt speeds below 50 feet per minute, contact ASCO as a low speed unit may be required. Prior to installation, ensure that the power is switched off and the conveyor is locked out to avoid accidental startup. Before removing the existing idler and brackets or V-return frame, ensure that the True Trainer dual return will be slightly higher than the existing idlers. True Trainer can be installed in the standard push-up position or installed inverted to push down depending on application. Ensure the tracking adjustment pin is facing the catwalk to ensure ease of access once installed. Set the distance between the inside of the plates to the recommended distance C as per the table to obtain the correct tracking angle. Increase the distance C if more tracking adjustment is needed. Because the dual return is multidirectional, it doesn't matter which way it is installed. Use slings and chain blocks to lift the True Trainer dual return into position under the conveyor belt. Bolt the brackets onto the structure. Before tightening, ensure both brackets are knocked fully forwards or backward to ensure the brackets are perpendicular to the structure and lined up exactly opposite each other. Once completed, tighten all bolts. With the slings or chain blocks, lower the belt onto the True Trainer dual return. It is essential that proper tension be applied to the belt for maximum performance. The belt should be deflected approximately 1 inch or 25 millimeters above or below existing idler center point levels. There should be sufficient tension to make it difficult to pivot by hand prior to startup. In general, increased angles of wrap will improve traction, resulting in improved performance. Increased traction is only needed if the True Trainer is not working correctly. Move the True Trainer dual return backwards and forwards with the tracking adjustment pin to check the tension. If the tension is correct, it should be difficult to move the pin backwards or forwards. This will ensure that sufficient conveyor belt tension is evenly distributed across the True Trainer's entire working surface. If the True Trainer dual return moves easily backwards and forwards, there is insufficient tension. Loosen the base from the bracket and move it upward using the adjusting bolt. Recheck the tension. If it is still insufficient, move up further until you achieve sufficient tension. Installation is now complete. Start the conveyor belt to test the dual return. Troubleshooting If the True Trainer dual return responds too slowly, increase the amount of tension. If the problem persists, Knock existing idler brackets or frames before and after the True Trainer dual return, perpendicular and horizontally aligned to the conveyor structure. Tracking problems can also be a result of too little or too much tension. To solve this problem, increase or lower the height of the idler in the frame by at least one hole upwards or downwards. If the problem still persists, remove any other tracking devices or inverters in front of or behind the True Trainer dual return before testing the conveyor system as they will reduce or interfere with the performance of the True Trainer dual return. Installation is now complete.